423 bringing almost purely yetis into this attack imagine gathering all the top content creators in the world and all the top esports players in the world and bringing them onto one giant war 50 versus 50 town hall 16 and then challenging everybody to do some of the crazy attacks we've ever seen and they delivered this year as usual yesterday we saw some live attacks and we're gonna have some of the live attacks here that we covered during the live stream during this video but some of them i missed because it was a 24-hour war so we're gonna dive in with the first one that i wanted to take a look at and i haven't seen this yet but it does look like kazuma from navi decided to do a pure blue army 64 balloons in this attack here let's see how he was able to take it down here and then after this we got a, a mass baby dragon attack there from gaku i got mass goblins from temper we saw that one live mass yetis from yo-yo 23 that one we also saw live we'll bounce over to the clips from the live stream just a moment here and check that out and some other crazy attacks as well that we will just kind of go through as we go through this video but kazuma started off with a warden dropping that blimp into the core of the base here to drop out super minions clone them up and then set up for the 64 balloons that then wrap around the base here the fact that he even had the idea that he could potentially pull this off here is kind of mind-blowing but then to attempt it would only get like two attacks per war and i'm pretty sure that uh kazuma got a six pack uh maybe not i don't remember i don't remember who all got six pack there but it's kind of hard to get a six pack when you're trying to break out crazy attacks like this but look we have the queen running the yak base equipment of the queen there king running base equipment and it looks like he's got the rage gem for the warden which honestly is great for these style of attacks here where you just run the eternal tome with the warden and then you get the invincibility that you need to protect that blimp on its way in but then you also just get a big surge out of the blues that you deploy to go and get extra value out of the ward ability and having them surge forward and get the rage effect and get a ton of extra damage there obviously is going to be very very effective but look it's the king and the queen just dive their way in take down the clan castle and clear out some of the defense there and he ends on the eagle artillery he just had to get the defensive heroes out of the way and he has this road champion diving in there to go in with the spirit fox and get the defensive road champion out now clan castles dealt with now the bulk of the defensive heroes are dealt with except for the king down south but look at this he's still sitting on 17 balloons <laughs> You gotta be kidding me. I mean, you know what? Actually, that does make sense. In an attack like this, you don't want to use up everything with the actual balloons. You gotta save something for cleanup, otherwise you end up just time failing. But look at this. With another 13 seconds, he's able to get everything engaged there almost instantly along the outside of the base there. And he not only was able to triple with 64 balloons, but he did it with a swag row champion ability, a swag invisibility, and a swag free. So Kazuma, what a madman. But let's go over to Gaku's attack here. It was against uh, base number 27. And he did the mass baby dragon. This on defense is Nebrox from Tribe Gaming. And he obviously got wrecked here. So let's see how Gaku was able to pull this off here. Because I haven't seen this yet. I haven't seen exactly how he was able to get this done here but it does look like he brought in a queen charge so very interesting flame flicker goes into the very top of the base there minions over to the left just start to work through the unprotected perimeter buildings over there and i guess uh, what was that a giant yeah just put in a giant in front of the flame flicker and another giant as well just keeping the mortar under control over here but the mortar did seem to have targeted the the flame flicker there so that's not ideal but i mean it is what it is and somehow he still pulled it off there even though we lost some value right there but it looks like he got down rather quickly here. And look at the Flame Flicker value up here. Getting scat... Or the... What do we call this? The, the Ricochet Cannon. Uh, and the Molten Inferno has the potential targets up here. But if you notice, when he actually gets the strikes on the Molten Inferno, since he's touching the Mortar there, he actually takes out both of them at the same time. And then he doesn't have any later threats there from other Mortars. So that's a, that's a nice... Uh, way to get that area of the base are cleared out there but the queen had to do her part she had to get her charge done wall break down here wall break up there that was a really really clever wall break right there for gaku and then had to deal with inferno dragons and headhunters on defense that probably invests the rage right or should be a freeze or invisibility rage okay oh that inferno dragon went full beam right as he took it down but with the path created for the queen to be able to exit the base you can see how he would now have to round the queen around to go secure the town takedown. He's got one more super wall breaker 
Over to the right side, here comes the king, Super Dragon out of the siege machine. And Baby Dragon started to clap to the very top of the base there, but the bulk of them wanted to go across the bottom of the base here, which obviously that is a dangerous area as well here. We got the models, we got two multi-archer towers and the town hall to deal with, but Super Dragon continues working up top there where they flame figure left out there. The king and warden, look at the warden here. Warden running rage gem again. I'm seeing a lot of people liking rage gem and I'm seeing a lot of people liking the giant gauntlet. I see people like Synthe, as we saw in yesterday's video, just completely demolish a base with a giant arrow, but I haven't seen many people leveling the giant arrow. It's been mostly the, the giant gauntlet, the rage gem, and then a couple people like the healing tome on the ward as well. So if you're trying to figure out where to spend your resources, that's where I'm thinking you got to go. But look at this. I, I guess he's got all these baby dragons that he will now start to throw around the bottom here. Does he even need them? What the heck? Okay. You know what? Can we even call this a mass baby dragon attacker? I don't think that we can because he just whacked them all. That doesn't count, does it? That's just a queen charge. That's just a queen. Okay, Gaku, he trolled me. I didn't know I didn't know what to expect here, but it looks like he brought 17 baby dragons and he swags 11 of them on top of everything else there. So nice job, Gaku. But guys, let's go over and check out the Mass Yeti and Mass Goblet attack there from Yo-Yo and Temper from the live stream. <laughs> nice. All right, all right, here we go. Yo-Yo 23. Holy Yetis! Yo-Yo 23 bringing almost purely Yetis into this attack. A little bit of lightning used to take out, looks like the Rage Tower and an Expo there and also what else did he get out of that? A battle builder? Is that all he got? I mean, that was a lot. That was a big investment for an expo and a rage tower. But I guess if it was in a key position, then it can make sense there. But the queen will make her way forward here. King uh, into the scatter shot up top there. Got the defensive queen out of the way there. For hero equipment, we got giant gauntlet level 18 of the king. Queen running uh, base equipment there. And a high level eternal tome onto the warden with the life gem. So... Let's we'll see what he can do here as he makes his way in. Here comes Headhunters for the defensive king. Get him out of the way there. Yetis down the line there. Yetis are going to be very, very great at uh, forming funnels there and throwing some Yeti Mice deeper in the base there. But a lot of skeleton spells are his spell of choice there outside of the outside of the lightning that he uses at the beginning. But remember, Yo Yo 23 is on the other team. He's on Carbon Finn's team. And we want Carbon Finn to lose this war we want to win this war so we can rub it in his face later on right that's the most important thing that's like literally if they're out of all on a scale of all the things that are important in clash of clans carbon fin losing this war is like pretty high up there it's like maybe not quite as big as the world championship but like uh close close <laughs> all right looks like the king was able to wrap all the way around the top of the base there and looks like he was able to clear everything on the outside but gets wrecked as soon as he goes to the monolith Queen staying safe. RC ability and Queen ability still intact. He's got the freeze. He can use the freeze to lock out the single inferno and the town hall or the monolith and the town hall, which is the choice here. Town hall needs to be frozen soon and he chooses the monolith. He does get the single inferno down. The queen did not get locked onto. She still has her ability. He'll freeze again at the town hall. RC took a strike there. Queen needs to get through a wall. Walls are already weakened up here. She pops her ability. Trying to get through faster. Trying to save this row champion. Can't get there in time. But does get the talent down. Stuck in the tornado trap. But gets pulled into the multi inferno. And Yetis are going to die and throw Yeti mites into the monos. Guys, that's a triple for the other team. But I'm not even mad about it. Wait a second. Maybe I maybe that's not a triple. Wait. Wait. Oh, there it goes! <laughs> I was about to say, can that multi arch tower stop the Yetis? But apparently not. The Yeti Mites are too much there. And Yo-Yo pulls off the triple with, I guess, a total of 17 of the Yetis there when you include what he had in his clan castle. Timper just placed second place in the World Championship of Clash of Clans with Rapati Gaming on stage in Helsinki, Finland. And now here he is. Breaking out 100 goblins and rocket balloons for this attack. All right, all right. Let's see what we can do here. He's going to be diving after the skelly donut to go after the expo, the scatter shot, the other scatter shot. Okay, maybe not the expo here, but definitely two scatter shots. How do you even spot that? 
I didn't even, that was like weird spacing right there. I don't know how you spotted that temper, but he does go ahead and drop into blimp over the right side of the base there, and he will go after the defensive queen with a Yeti bomb. Getting another defense in the area out of the way there in the process, and good amount of value right there. All right, that works, that works. It's a good, it's a good start. It's a very good start so far, but now down comes that big high-level golem. It looks awesome, by the way, the new level of golem. And it's gonna be protecting his king. King equipment is giant gauntlet, level 15 with the rage vial. Queen is just running base equipment there. And Warden looks like he's leveled up his eternal tome to level 18, which gives him extra time of invincibility. What is an extra, like half a second? I mean, it adds up. It adds up, especially if you're going through the town hall and you need some extra protection here. But he still only scratched the surface of his 100 goblins that he has here. A third of his army, just goblins. But he'll make his way through with the queen getting a wall break. The king surges forward there, getting some nice hits there with the king. King is able to pick himself right back up with the phoenix. And look at this. I didn't realize that. The king stays giant while the phoenix is active. He doesn't lose that, and he continues to strike away. And remember, when you have the giant glove or giant gauntlet, you do deal damage to all the other buildings that are touching the target. So you end up getting a ton of extra damage right there. But there we go. Warden deploys with a couple of the hogs. I see at least one hog there. I didn't see a lot. But it looks like he got the defensive world champion in the way there. And the warden keeps on pushing with the world champion. Got the models out of the way. Ground skellies. Or excuse me. Uh, Teslas, I mean. I, say, <laughs> I look at Teslas and I expect ground skellies. So that was just kind of a default play. But throwing in the goblins. Got to get all these collectors and storage out of the way. I guess they're mostly just clean up here. But if all the storages and collectors go down, the goblins will target defenses. Got to uh, get past this defensive king. But look at this. He's using the goblins... As distraction for the defensive king, the king can't do anything. All the clickers are down. The goblins working to get the king out of the way and clear the way for the road champion. The king can no longer intercept. The goblins swarm him and get him out of the way. And that means it is a triple. Timper gets it done. 100 goblin attack. Easy day, easy triple, and some swag on top of that. <laughs> oh my god these guys are wild i don't know how those guys do it it's insane but let's go into rigo taurus now i just want to show this one really really quick here because i feel like this one is something that a lot of people could relatively easily replicate here but 16 dragons 16 dragons with a rage gem on the warden is Rigo Taurus's attack of choice here and honestly it's insane I've been using this one on the dev build we've already showcased this a little bit in previous videos but if you're looking for one of the simplest spam attacks that literally only requires you to upgrade like one thing just dragons right and then just blip out the town hall use the ward ability to protect your way through to make sure that blip arrives and then just have the heroes work along that side like it's as simple as that use a bit of lightning there to just remove a couple of key targets and I guess I have to rewind it. You'll have, you'll have to rewind it, actually, because I can't rewind. Maybe uh, someday they'll add a rewind function to the game, right? But you guys can rewind the video there and see exactly what he zapped out. But all he's got to do is just spam him across here. But I'll go into 4 speed here because the dragons just continue to wrap around the base here. Heroes wrap through. Easy pickup. Guys, this army is insane. I'm telling you, this army is nuts. Also, special note here, Warden also had the the phoenix as well and he was running the uh, spear fox on the road champion i don't know if that's necessary i feel like uh maybe the road champion is still great with the diggy there so you don't have to have a max level uh spear fox to make this work but obviously very very powerful but this next one definitely caught my eye and guys this is only the one half of the war and excluding the ones that we showed in yesterday's video and uh i mean look at this here look at this here kevin decided to go in with a Noah's Ark. It's really a ground Noah's Ark here. It's all the different ground troops in the game. One of every ground troop in the game, because nowadays there's so many different types of troops that we can't like go on with like a full Noah's Ark. We can't go in with like a dragon and an E-drag and a super dragon or whatever. All the different uh, air troops there were excluded, like dragon riders and stuff like that, right? But look at this. He did decide to bring in three Inferno Dragons, and I love what he did with that. But he used a little bit of lightning to clear out the area up by the Warden Walk. Flame Flicker starts to collapse in the top of the base there. Warden is able to go in and get the Warden Walk to go get this multi-inferno down and break the ring of trash and defenses to make sure that 
Everybody goes exactly where he wants them to go. And if you're going to do a full ground attack there, then you're probably going to put it all together here. But the healers are with the warden. And I didn't even see how many healers he had here. But one thing that I do want to point out... Oh, look at this. This is Yeti. Go get the mortar under control. Did he do that again? Did he get more protection for that? But over the right side, he did have an opportunity to sneak in with, like, one wizard and take out all the trash in that corner and pick up the air defense. So, obviously, that sets up for the Inferno Dragons with no other major threats there for the Inferno Dragons. They can just march their way and take the Town Hall, but he does have to manage that at the same time as he's doing the rest here. So, you can't just uh, have the easiest walk in the park there to go deal with that. But I love what he did here overall. There goes the Golem. The Electro Titan, the P.E.K.K.A., and I guess the Ice Golem all in the side there. And it doesn't look like he has that many healers. Is that like a two healer walk there? Is it three healers? I guess we'll see at the very end of the attack here how many healers he had with it. But up top here, Super Minions. So I guess he did have some extra variety of air troops up there. They got the the scatter shot of the way there and found the Tesla farm afterwards. And then over to the right side, here comes the Inferno Dragons. Need spell support for that. And invisibility, just let that Inferno Dragon build up its beam and secure the town take to it. But the other Inferno Dragon that came in afterwards, after he realized that the first one probably wasn't going to get the job done, he decided to invest a freeze and that freeze was clutch right there. There's a Valkyrie. Valkyrie's got the healers right there trying to get the monolith. Obviously not going to get through that wall and take it down, so he's at the good, he'll have to go back for that monolith there, but he's got his rogue champion in the mix here. She's got the Spirit Fox once again. Let's look at the equipment for the hero here. King has basic equipment. Queen has basic equipment. Warden has basic equipment, so nothing out of the ordinary here. This is stuff that everybody should have access to at this point and uh, i mean you should be able to replicate this but i don't know why you would <laughs> i mean there's definitely easier attacks there that don't put you into seven rows of uh troop deployment there to be able to get through but nice job kevin here this is really really cool here you don't really see a lot of people attempting noah's ark nowadays but i mean if you're gonna do it this is the way to make it happen swag that queen ability trip on the board here kevin gets it done and now our next attack here is going to be one of my personal favorites. Let's take a look at what Gizmo did to Hades. Gizmo is breaking out root riders and witches. Obviously, this is not like a super high skill attacker. It just made me happy because it's witches. So I'll play it in double speed or four up speed here so we can see exactly what happened. But a blimp goes into the word ability and is able to secure the town takedown. And then root riders and witches just spam across the base. <laughs> I mean, it's nothing crazy. It's nothing crazy. It just has witches and witches make me happy. All right. I just needed to put in the video. Don't judge me. I love my witches. So yeah, easy push here across the base here, but it did get a little bit dicey towards the end. You see that the queen was one of the only troops standing and the world champion kind of passed her up right there. So she had to carry her way all the way to the finish here. And luckily she still had her ability intact there after all the witches died and she's able to get it done. So nice job, Gizmo. And uh, yeah, that, that was that was for me, I guarantee it. You know, he knew I was, uh, he knew I was gonna come back and find that. But the last attack that I wanted to take a look at and one of the ones that I ended up being one of the clutch ones at the very end to take the win was right here. Oh my God, by the way, do you guys see this one from yesterday's video? <laughs> you can go back to yesterday's video and see the full attack here from Kronos, 28 Valkyries. He did another attack with like mass Pekkas as well, which was nuts. I mean, I don't know what was cooler, the mass Yeti attack that we just saw or the mass Pekka attack that Kronos did right there. Both of them wild, but look at this one here. This one was Super Barbarians and Super Wizards. Recall, kind of an interesting lineup here. You'd expect that if we're going to be throwing out 10 Super Wizards, that we'd have like a bunch of tanking troops or something, right? That was my first impression. But then I looked at the uh, troop bar here, and I see two Ice Golems. And that's about it. <laughs> not, not much for tanking there. So I, I actually haven't seen this one yet either. So I'm very curious to see what he did with 10 Super Wizards here to take this base down. And interestingly enough... This is actually the same base that I've been using on defense. And now Ninja was able to take this one down. And I don't think anybody could really replicate this attack here, which is kind of cool. But I had a slight tweak to this base to make it better than the version that Piggy is using here. And the base that I tweaked ended up holding defenses for, what, six defenses? I think it was six defenses. So I'm going to go ahead and... Uh, take the base link for the base version of this that I had. And since it held so many defenses in this war, I'm gonna go ahead and toss it into the, into the, into the video description, right? We'll put it there next to 
our social media links so you guys can go follow me on Twitter, on Facebook. We uh, post uh, extra videos over there. And uh, we got the TikTok channel as well. You guys know that? We'll uh, post up highlight attacks that don't have enough attacks to make it into a full war over on TikTok. And you guys can catch those as well. So sometimes things happen and it's not long enough to make a full video. So I toss it over onto the social medias and you guys can catch it there. But look at this. He did end up losing a lot of the super wizards as he made his way to the base there. But... Like, they, they didn't get that much value there because there was nothing tanking for them. They just kind of wandered off there. But the Queen and the Warden charged the Town Hall. What kind of equipment they got here? Warden running basic equipment, Queen running basic equipment, and King running the level 15 Giant Gauntlet. Looks like he forced all of his uh, resources into upgrading the Giant Gauntlet, and the King did a pretty good job down at the bottom there. And I love when people pair the Giant Gauntlet with the, uh, with the, uh, Golem King skin. <laughs> because the Golem King skin already makes the King pretty massive and then the giant gauntlet and then the rage vial all combine and make him even bigger and it just makes me laugh every time i see somebody breaking out the giant gauntlet with the uh, golem king skin so nice job ninja this was a very cool attack here what he's got in the siege machine he had some super minions so yeah i guess the super wizards didn't really do that much there but i mean town hall 16 is a very interesting place there and we will have more coverage of the crazy attacks that emerged from the other side of the war that have not been shown yet. And so subscribe to the channel, like this video, and we'll see you in the next one.